Hey guys, um, managed to secure this. Uh, it is a 1978 uh, Fender Strat. Uh, pretty standard apart from one little modification. It does have a Floyd Rose. Um, strange that it's still got the single core pickups. Um, but it does have a Floyd Rose. Looks like it's been done pretty well. Um, seems okay. Um, so why would I get a guitar like this? It's got no finish on it, it's got a Floyd Rose. It's not your sort of typical Fender Strat sort of thing. Um, we're gonna go on a bit of a journey and I'm gonna attempt to turn it into a Mick Mars inspired Strat since Fender never ever made um, a Mick Mars Strat. I think they missed a massive opportunity there. Um, anyway, so I'm going to try and do it myself. So, we're sort of halfway there. We've definitely got the Floyd and we've got most of the paint off. Um, so we need to turn this into a white guitar. A uh, little bit of um, varnish on it, but look, 99% of the work's been done. A little bit around the, the obvious, you know, the hard to reach areas. A little bit of sandpaper should clean that up. Got a new pickguard on the way from Warmoth. Um, so obviously we need to put two humbuckers in here. I'm assuming we might need to do a little bit of routing out underneath. We'll find out once we have a look in there. Um, it's only literally just come in the door. Um, and then of course we'll need to repaint it and um, get some new pickups. So got some new pickups on the way from Bare Knuckles. Um, I'm not going to go quite as hot as Mick. I believe he uses um, about 16 ohms resistance. Now I've tried um, the Sewer Doug Aldrich pickups, which were about 17. The great pickups, it just, it's just not for me. So um, I'm a big fan of the Bare Knuckles. Um, so we'll find a pair from them and drop them in. Might keep the original middle because um, the single coils are originals, um, got a nice fender sort of quack to them. Um, but yeah, here we are, um, 78 Strat. Let's go and see what we can do to it. And so concurrently with the uh, body work, also doing the electronics. So we've got the pickup cover. Uh, lovely from Warmoth. Highly, highly recommend those guys. All this stuff is great, really configurable. Uh, arrives really quickly in the post. Just, yeah, good stuff. Um, so I have dismantled the old pick guard and transferred the middle single pickup to the middle position. And we've got two humbucker spaces left. So... Two humbuckers from the amazing guys at Bare Knuckle Pickups. Can't say enough good things about these guys. They're just producing some amazing stuff at the moment. Pretty much got maybe 80% of my guitars um, with Bare Knuckles. Most of them Rebel Yells. So we have um, a pair of Rebel Yells here. Um, got a Mule you know, Strat as well, which is really nice, but... The Rebel Yells just seem to work for me. I really, really like them. Um, so the other bit then is volumes and tones. Um, so that's all still in there. I'm actually going to replace them. Just because, you know, these are getting a bit old now. They still work, no problem. But just thought I'd clean them up. So a um, uh, company Steve Stevens recommended called Mojo Tone is mailing out a new selector switch and some volumes and tones. I'll just rip the knobs off here and put them on the new ones when they arrive. So check out Mojo Tone and uh, yeah, we'll see what they uh, sound like when they arrive. So I've got a couple of single core pickups left over. Um, might chuck them up on eBay and see if uh, anyone's interested in them. But uh, yeah, here we are. The build continues. 
And so here we are. We've got a couple of coats of undercoat on now and um, a little bit of uh, coverage over the protective paint in there. So it is uh, meant to be a slightly odd colour in there. But the body itself is actually coming up much better than I expected. Um, it's coming up okay. Still a little bit of sanding I think to do just to get some consistency across those little white spots there but generally speaking it's pretty consistent right across the body so we are making some progress and uh, yeah we'll do one more sand and then we might start on the top coat so here we are getting towards the end of the paint job now before we get into the paint um, I'm going to talk about the actual paint. It is nitrocellulose paint. Um, you might have to look around for this stuff. Um, here in Melbourne, Australia, it ain't easy to find. Um, it's a little bit toxic, so you definitely want some protection. That's a, a breathing mask. Um, and you can see, make sure you do it outside. Don't do it in an enclosed area because um, one of the reasons they don't use this paint much anymore on guitars is it's nasty stuff. So just be careful out there. Well ventilated area. Make sure you've got some protection. Um, rubber gloves is also a really good idea to keep the paint off you. Um, I've gone through, this is the second um, can of this now. Um, so I'd recommend getting a couple. Um, and we're getting towards the end of the second can, so hopefully you can see it's looking really good. Couple of incidents along the way. Um, occasionally the can will spray a little bit of a bubble, a little bit of a glob of paint onto the guitar. So um, again, these things, they come with um, the balls in them. You have to shake them for at least two or three minutes, like a minimum of two or three minutes before you start spraying to mix up the paint. And when you do spray, make sure you keep it moving and make sure you're starting out here. Don't start on top of the guitar because the first lot of paint that comes out will typically be, you know, a bit of mess and a bit of gook and stuff coming out of the can. Um, so start off out here, get rid of all the muck and stuff, and then by the time you get to the guitar, it should be spraying a nice fine mist. Um, this has taken probably a good four to six weeks to get it to this point, and we're talking about, and that's it. You know, just give it a once over each section of the guitar, and you're talking about a mist fine spray so it's going to take a long time to get through a couple of cans <laughs> my other lesson learned be patient this takes a really really long time um anyway coming back to the little you know bubbles and, and gunk like that you can just let it dry give it a tiny tiny little light sand um this paint is really really fragile as well so you don't need to get stuck into it with the sander. Um, I haven't even put any finger pressure on it. I literally just put the paper and just rub it a little bit like that and um, it'll get rid of any bumps or bubbles or anything like that. And then make sure it's clean each time as well. So give it a wipe down um, and keep an eye out for any specks, any hairs, anything that's flying around in the air out here. But um, Anyway, she is coming along. We are just about done, and then we're going to move to the final varnish to add sort of a, a protection, a seal on it. And uh, yeah, then we're about ready to start putting it together. So on the home run, I think we're getting there. Okay, on the home stretch and getting to the relic stage now. So. Um, what I've been doing here is you will need a good strong knife. I also recommend a pencil and I'll explain that in a minute um, and some sandpaper. Get some really rough stuff and get some really fine stuff for the details. So the reason for the pencil, use a template. So what I'm trying to do here 
is get in on the detail of Nick's guitar. You can see he's got some really identifiable scratches on there. Um, you've got a couple down near um, the plug. And there's that massive one right at the top there at the top of the scratch plate. We've got another angle over here. See, they're pretty identifiable. There's a bit of stuff around the, the back of the neck there and under, under the plug there along sort of the edges of the guitar. So that's what I'm aiming for. So use the pencil, especially for the big one there. Um, I'm using the pencil just to outline the rough shape. And then the knife will get rid of most of the stuff so I'm, I'm literally just scraping it off like that you know don't get too fussed about the detail I'm leaving a little bit of paint there just because you know it looks all right um, it's meant to be rough anyway and then the sandpaper will smooth out the edges to give it that um, you know worn look you don't want to the, the knife gets a little bit rough around the edges um, and that's not really how relicking works relicking is more about wearing down the paint uh, we're just trying to wear it down in about three seconds. <laughs> so, um, so sandpapering is, you can see some of the scratches there from the sandpaper. Don't worry, that'll, that'll come out after a little bit of buffing and cleaning up. But you can see some smoother edges around here. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. that. That'll do. It's close enough. It's sort of the general idea. That's sort of the general idea. Um, as we said, there's some identifiable marks down near the plug there right along the end there and under the neck joint as Mick has done um, depends how you know finicky you want to get about this sort of stuff a um, little bit of scratching on the back just because that's what would happen when you're wearing the guitar so I'll bang this up a bit put a couple of there's a couple of little more sort of scratches on it just to make it look a little bit worn in and we are almost getting there. Um, I think next step will be we'll pop the neck on and get the Floyd and the electronics back in. Hey guys, so here we are at the end of the journey. Um, so literally picked this up this morning from my tech, uh, the fabulous Simon at 80s Guitars in west of Melbourne. Um, I'll put his link below. Um, he has managed to put this together and just tidy up some of my not so great work <laughs> so thank you simon um look i'd still say it's been really interesting even though i have no idea what i'm doing and i'm just making it up as i go um i'd encourage everyone just to have a bit of a go at it um i'm really lucky uh, i guess i've got simon to back me up and to get me out of um, the stuff that I get myself into so thank you Simon anyway here she is um, so yeah we've um, got the paint paints looking good um, I'm sure it'll you know it'll soften up over time and just get the edges out um, got the scratch plate on got two bare knuckles in there um, neck and bridge kept the original um, single coil in the middle position there um, and got a three-way um, position switch here so you know just straight up simple rock and roll Floyd needed a little bit of tweaking um, but she's working all right now neck um, is good um, and she's a heavy guitar um, yeah it's a big one so um, yeah, very, very happy with the way this has come out. Looks awesome. Um, to do the full Mick Mars things, we are tuned down a whole tone. So it's what we call D standard tuning. sound um, sounds pretty good need to get it out live I think and you know just crank it up it's pretty quiet here in the studio but 
and hopefully you get a bit of an idea. Um, I'll play you a little bit of a demo, just some um, sound so you can hear what it sounds like in a band context. But yeah, really, really happy. Come out well. Mm -hmm. 